Welcome back. You're listening to The Voice of Russia. This is our weekly link up with our other bureaus. My name is Brandon Cole. Well, what a difference a year makes. Only 12 months ago, Mohamed Morsi was hailed as the first democratically elected leader in Egypt's history. Today, he's under house arrest. This afternoon, the top judge of Egypt's constitutional court, Adli Mahmoud Mansour, was sworn in as interim leader after days of protests swept the ruling Muslim Brotherhood from power. Mr Mansour said fresh elections were the only way forward but gave no indication as to when they would be held. I swear to preserve the system of the republic and respect the constitution and law and guard the people's interests. He also praised the military as the conscience of the nation and the guarantor of its security and safety. The millions of protesters that took to the streets throughout Egypt have been caught up in revolutionary fervour. I feel we became free. I feel we started building the country all over again. And I feel that our revolution goes on. Egypt will remain a civil state. Muslim and Christians are one. The army, the police and the people are one. Earlier, the General Secretary of the Socialist Party of Egypt, Ahmed Shaban, spoke to the Voice of Russia and had this to say. The regime of Muslim Brother is finished. Uh, no food, no uh, petrol, no uh, electricity, no uh, safety. It is uh, very difficult to uh, be uh, uh, in Egypt now under the uh, Muslim Brother regime. So Egypt got to breathe the air of democracy briefly, but what is the future of democracy in Egypt from now on, now that the military has once again stepped in? Well, to discuss this and the issues surrounding this, I'm pleased to be joined in the studio by Mustafa Ragab. He's uh, director of the London-based cultural centre Egyptian House. Also here in the studio is Dina Wahba. She's an Egyptian feminist and activist who has just come back from Cairo, where she took part in the protests. On the line from Cairo, we have Wael Nawara, who's a co-founder of the opposition al Dastur party, of which Mohammed Al Baraday is the leader. And in Moscow, we have Vladimir Belyakov, who's a senior researcher at the Institute of Oriental Studies at the Russian Academy of Scientists. A warm welcome to you all. Thank you for joining us on The Voice of Russia. Um, Dina, it took 18 days of protests to force Hosni Mubarak from power. This time it took only three days. I mean, did the, did the sheer speed of it surprise you? Uh, not really. For, since the first day uh, in the fir- on the fir- 30th of June, uh, seeing the sheer number of people, it was just clear to me that uh, the voice of the people will... Uh, um, but... Uh, that the voice of the people will, yes. will be heard by everyone. Um, it was on the 30th of June, I knew this is going to be over. But rejecting the results of elections that were widely deemed to be free and fair, does that trouble you at all. The army has stepped in and taken control again. Well, um, the thing is, we're thinking uh, with a very limited mind or a narrow mind when it comes to democracy. So is democracy only about elections or is it about the rule of people and the voice of people and listening to their voice and what they want? Uh, There has been a lot of proposals uh, to the Muslim Brotherhood in in order to have a political, some sort of political deal in order to please the people and not um, make them that angry to the extent that they all take to the streets on the 30th of June, but they refuse to cooperate. Uh, And now that was the only way to do things. Uh, Of course, there are some concerns when it comes to the military, but so far, it seems that the military doesn't want to play a a political role, at least not in in its own. And there there seems to be a wide coalition with the the military in order to uh, run the interim um, uh, time. Mustafa Raghab, yesterday um, on the BBC, the UK spokesperson for the Muslim Brotherhood said it was a horrendous blow against democracy. What do you think of her comments? Well, it depends on the uh, people's definition of uh, democracy, really. Uh, I will say the people of Egypt have elected uh, President Morsi and the people of Egypt have rejected President Morsi. So um, if everyone will use the words uh, to support his case, uh, that is what's happening now. But I could see this coming for a long time. I, I, you know, I was waiting for it, but I didn't know how it will happen. I didn't expect the army uh, to have the word in saying um, uh, that this will happen. But um, this 
since Morsi became a president, the, the poor man, uh, they, they brought him uh, from nowhere to make him the president of Egypt. That's the Muslim Brotherhood. And he was the third choice. We all know that. Uh, the people of Egypt were really torn about between choosing Mubarak's allies or the Muslim Brotherhood. So when we say elected, I will accept that. But the people of Egypt were really torn about between choosing one man from two people. They didn't want any of them. Um, we accepted that Morsi became the president. We were hoping that he will guide the country uh, into uh, stability and security and will help to improve the situation. But the man didn't know what he let himself for because he did not deliver. And uh, every day uh, he, he said anything, he was causing problems. Any day he, that he was taking any decisions, he was causing problems. So I was waiting for this to happen. I, I knew that it will happen. But maybe in the hands of the Egyptian people, I didn't expect the army. The army have responded to the wishes of the Egyptian people. If this didn't happen today, could you imagine that the Muslim Brotherhood bringing their supporters to the streets, and the opposition bringing their people to the streets, and the Egyptian army struggling to separate the two parties. There were going to be clashes, they were armed, it was going to be a disaster. So I am glad that the army have stepped in. The army did not take over, so we can't call it a coup, because in the West... We I can't call it a coup. Why can we call it a coup? Can, can we not call no, it a coup? we cannot call it a coup. Because it's a coup the, in all but name, though, isn't the, it? The, the, the army didn't take over. The army is not running the country. The army has appointed the top judge today to run the country for a period that he will allow for the election and electing a new president. A coup if the army would talk over and they are running the country. But this didn't happen. OK, well, look, we'll cross now to Cairo with Wael Nawara, co-founder of the opposition al Dastur party. Thank you for joining us on The Voice of Russia. Uh, can you hear me OK? Yes, I can hear you. Great. Well, look, the line's, the line's up. But um, the military have issued arrest warrants for up to 300 members of the Muslim Brotherhood. What's the significance of this? Does, does this mean that they are looking for some kind of revenge? What should we, what should we take from that? Uh, I, I don't have really a clear information about uh, these arrests, but uh, from what I understand, the limited information I have is that uh, the Muslim Brothers uh, started to mobilize their militias, we know very well, and we have been observing the inflow of arms uh, coming from Libya, and the Muslim Brothers themselves admitted several times that they have been shipping arms to Syria and shipping militants and shipping uh, fighters to Syria. And they're, they're also, it has been observed, their links and their communication with jihadists. And Khairat Shatter also is head of a certain committee which has in its members terrorist organizations, uh, jihadist organizations, and many militants. So I think if uh, Muslim brothers uh, would, uh, some Muslim brothers would be proven uh, to have incited acts of violence, uh, killing of protesters, uh, conspiring. Uh, to uh, uh, make it appear as if the Egyptian army uh, had divisions, because this one uh, was one of the plans. And uh, if you remember, if you recall, uh, large amounts of army uniform fabric was uh, was confiscated be just before uh, being uh, uh, taken by the Muslim Brothers, uh, and uh, it was claimed uh, that uh, it was it would be used uh, as uh, as clothes for orphan kids in in, in Gaza. And uh, of course, the fear was that uh, the Muslim Brothers would create uh, some uh, 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 what what would appear to be a division uh, in the army. So these are the you know all potential crimes inciting. Uh, violence and conspiring against uh, the state, uh, etc. But I don't think that they will be uh, prosecuted uh, for political reasons, because yesterday we heard very clearly the spokes of uh, the armed forces came out, reaching out to Islamist youth. Of course, uh, uh, the Muslim Brothers and uh, President Morsi had uh, uh, maybe million, two million, several million supporters, and uh, these are Egyptian people. They have all the right to uh, to be integrated in the political process and to have mm. uh, institutions which will uh, uh, which will represent them. However, uh, the, uh, this is one thing, and conspiring against the country and carrying arms to kill civilians, that's a totally different thing. Okay, well, breaking the law, simply. Okay, Dina, I mean, you took part in the protests and, and, and there were the amazing scenes, hundreds of thousands, millions of people taking to the streets, but, uh, I mean... Mubarak, uh, sorry, not, not Mubarak, but um, after the fall of Mubarak, uh, when Morsi came into power, there were something like 20-odd protests 
as soon as, soon as he came, took power anyway. Um, people didn't want him in the first place, did they? Well, well as... This is for, uh, I'll get uh, Dina Waba's uh, version of events and then I'll, I'll turn back to you, uh, YL. Well, uh, people really gave him the chance uh, on certain conditions. Like one of the conditions was about to create consensus uh, um, about the constitution and to have some constitutional amendments. And um, he ha- he failed to deliver on all of his promises. He he out he out on the open lied. Basically, he said uh, he gave certain promises. He said that he will do certain reforms, and he failed to to deliver. He didn't even attempt to deliver. Um, so so by but the constitution that he was being so widely criticised for did eventually go to a referendum and 62% of the people voted for it. So it gained its legit legitimacy through through the ballot box. Again, there are many arguments that even 63% is not enough because constitutions are not about majority versus minority. It's about national consensus. Um, and he already promised that he was going to uh, have build a wider coalition when it comes to writing the constitution. These were his promises. These were his words. And he failed to deliver on them. But don't forget as well that he went back on his constitution and he made some amendments. Yes, the constitution declaration, exactly. So uh, so, so we're there going back all the time and what we're doing. So uh, uh, the the, the problem was created by the Muslim Brotherhood themselves and by the leadership. If if they didn't know how to run the situation, if they have to manage conflicts, that would have been much easier for Egypt. Egypt mm. didn't need all that. They didn't need to prosper. It needed to uh, become uh, better in education, in health, in economy. But they, they were not looking at all these things. What they were looking at is to reward the Muslim Brotherhood who suffered in the time of Mubarak and Nasser and Sadat, reward them by putting them in positions to run the country. And that is where they went wrong. OK, well, look, I'll quickly turn to our Moscow bureau and our guest there, Vladimir Belyakov. He's from the Russian Academy of Sciences. Uh, earlier on, the former Russian Prime Minister, Yevgeny Primakov, spoke to the Voice of Russia uh, and he discussed and outlined the role of the United States. The Americans looked for partners in Egypt. They established contacts with the Muslim Brotherhood. They understood, of course, that there was a need to prevent Egypt from falling into the hands of extremists. Because besides the Muslim Brotherhood, there is also the Islamist party called Nur, which stood on extremist position and had a considerable number of deputies in the Egyptian parliament. But obviously Americans failed to streamline the situation. That's the former Russian Prime Minister Yevgeny Primakov speaking to us uh, earlier today. Vladimir Belyakov, um, how is Russia going to view this? They can't, as far as Russia is concerned, are they seeing this as a military coup and an undermining of democracy? Well, you know, I represent just uh, myself. And from my point of view as an Orientalist who worked many years in Egypt, who knows Egypt, likes Egypt, well, uh, it was the highest... Uh, case of democracy which uh, may be uh, just an example to a lot of uh, different countries. And events of uh, yesterday were thoroughly prepared by young revolutionaries uh, who started to collect signatures for retiring uh, President Morsi uh, several months ago and collected, as I know, no less than uh, 23 million uh, uh, signatures, which is much more than number of votes uh, which had been given for Mursi last year during presidential elections. Uh, so from my point of view, uh, uh, it was a correction of a mistake which uh, had been, which was done last year during uh, the presidential election. Uh, I understand the situation. You know, uh, in such a situation, we used to say that the choice, uh, both choices were wrong at that time. I, I mean, uh, Mohammed Mursi and Ahmed Shafiq, because Ahmed Shafiq represented the old regime, and a lot of people uh, couldn't just vote for him. Uh, and uh, Mohammed Mursi uh, represented the Muslim brothers, uh, who generally... Uh, also, from my point of view, uh, were not accepted by the majority of people. I judge by, uh, by results of the first round of the presidential elections when candidates from Islamists received just a little bit over 42% uh, of the votes. 
And uh, from my point of view, it clearly showed uh, that the majority of uh, Egyptians uh, uh, wanted to continue the state not to be a religious one, just... Uh, uh, but the second round of, of uh, elections gave them very difficult choice. And some people made a mistake. They decided that Morsi uh, uh, had just uh, uh, clean hands. He was from the organization which was oppressed during Mubarak era. Let we give him chance. It may be better than just to vote for Ahmed Shafiq. And events of those days, uh, from my point of view, was uh, a, a correcting revolution which corrected the mistake uh, made last year. OK, well, look, I'm back to Cairo, Wael Nawara. Uh, what about the West's role in this? There certainly has been Western encouragement of democratization of the region, not just Egypt, but, but the wider region. Do you think that um, clearly the United States and the United Kingdom will find it difficult to support what's happened in the last 24 hours, seeing an elected leader uh, ousted? What can they do? I mean, have the, have, the quite, have the promises that they've made about democracy been not quite, not quite up to it? I think we're... Uh, I agree with uh, my colleagues on, on this uh, uh, in the studio and from Russia that uh, we have to look at uh, democracy as much, much bigger uh, process than just the elections. I think that the Muslim brothers manipulated the roadmap from the very start because they were part of the old regime and it was a bipolar regime, so when one part of the regime, which was the National Democratic Party, fell, the Muslim Brothers automatically came to power and they manipulated the roadmap to their advantage. And Egyptians, uh, as was rightly said, uh, they were faced with uh, two rejected choices, uh, choosing between two evils, choosing between, again, same choices of the past, uh, whether somebody from the old regime or the NDP, who were also part of the old regime. So, in fact, uh, the choice uh, was between, you know, is a lesser of, of, of both evils. So, mm. coming now and saying that uh, this is a departure from democracy, I think nothing could be uh, further from the truth. I think this is the 12th of February 2011, as, as far as I'm concerned. This is the second day after Mubarak has left, that we have got rid of uh, uh, the Mubarak regime with both its, uh, its, its, its poles. Now we have to, to start looking at... Uh, options which are generated by the new era, by the new revolution. And uh, I think that uh, uh, we have to also see that uh, Morsi has totally departed, uh, departed from legitimacy. He has broken his oath. Uh, he has uh, given himself the right to uh, issue uh, supra-constitutional declarations. He put the Supreme Constitutional Court out of order by uh, uh, sending his militias to put the, the uh, court under siege while it was sitting to uh, uh, judge in a very important uh, uh, issue related to the Shura Council and related to uh, the Constituent Assembly. So Morsi himself has legitimized himself. Okay, but can I just break, break, can I interrupt there? Is it, Okay, that is that is the argument, but also a, a stronger argument. Some would say is that the sh that the economic state of the average Egyptian has diminished so much under his tenure. It's really about the financial state. The, the people don't have the the money that they did, um, and the economic opportunities, the jobs, and so on, aren't there? Aren't they the most important reasons? And the prices went up. Are, 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 can you can you specify who you're asking the question? I'm asking that to you, uh, Wayal Nawara. Uh, were were the economic the reasons, people, stronger reasons for what we've seen in the last few days than the constitutional I, reasons? I would see that economic reasons uh, amplified the calls for uh, for rebellion, but they were not the major reason. Because if you look at the people in the street, most of the people in the street uh, in Cairo and major cities. In fact, they were middle class. It was not the uh, poorest of the people rising because of bread prices or whatever. These people, in fact, were rising out of two things. First, feeling that they were losing Egypt, that Egypt was on the brink of collapse by a reckless uh, leader. Uh, and secondly, feeling that the Muslim Brothers is trying to remold Egypt 
into a Muslim Brothers identity, which does not acknowledge nation state, that does not acknowledge the true culture and the true diversity in the Egyptian society. This was the main two main things. People felt the risk of losing Egyptian state, being on the verge of collapse, and also losing its identity. Okay, Dina, um, can I just ask you, I mean, I'm, the point I'm trying to make is really, perhaps Egyptians have been sold a false idea of democracy in the West. The West spurred on with its democratization program in Iraq, and we can talk about that for a long time. Um, but without, without, well, forgetting the fact that d- democracy takes generations and generations to settle in, perhaps Egyptians are wanting this far too quickly. They only gave it a year. Well, um, actually, before I answer this question, I really want to go back to the um, your question about the role of America uh, and Western powers. And, um, and I have to say that many Egyptians were very disappointed by the role that had been played with the, by the Americans. And um, again, they decided to ally themselves with uh, the regime rather than the, the people. They did the same mistake again. And when I was on the streets, whether in Tahrir or in front of the presidential palace, you can see a lot of signs against Obama saying that actually Obama is sponsoring terrorism. It was to that extent how they were very devastated. And I have to say I was also uh, very disappointed about uh, the international media, especially Western media, and how they covered it. It was very uh, orientalist, uh, stereotypical idea about the politics in the third world countries or Middle Eastern countries. It's all about Islamists versus the military. They chose to ignore the people. And again, the Um, There is the idea of grassroots democracy that the Western countries are not able to comprehend or accept uh, rather than ballot box democracy that they have been um, so far uh, living with and believing in. Well, following up on that point with regard to the U.S. uh, role, uh, Mustafa, what's your view? I mean, if the United States rule or decide that this is a military coup, um, they bankroll Egypt's military to the tune of $1.5 billion a year. Um, That's going to be problematic if they withdraw that money. Uh, My personal opinion about um, the West and the United States in particular, that they will do what they will benefit from. Uh, democracy, human rights, uh, we hear all the things uh, and you want to implement it in the Middle East and in Egypt, but we're only seeing uh, doing what suits them at the time, not sincerely looking to establish democracy and human rights uh, in Egypt. Um, but um, I would just want to go back to the point of the arrest that we made uh, on the Muslim Brotherhood leadership and the shutting down of the uh, Muslim Brotherhood stations, television stations. Um, I could see this from my personal view as well, that was, it was a precaution that the uh, uh, decision that was taking, there you could say that those stations and those leaders will be used to motivate Muslim Brotherhood to come out in numbers in the street, and that could have caused a disaster. We don't agree with shutting stations, we don't agree with arrest, but I think that was a precaution to secure the streets of Egypt. But going back to the stations, the religious station I consider absolutely wrong, whether they are Muslim or Christian because they are both used to implement inflammatory uh, comment about each other. You can have a religious program in a radio program or in a, in a television station, but having a purely religious in, uh, stations, whether they are Christian or Muslim, I don't agree with that. Um, but into our Moscow studio, Vladimir Belyakov, I, I'd like to get your view on what this, what lessons can be learned for the region. Um, there was comments actually from uh, Bashar al-Assad's regime in Syria that um, it, it's, an, it's an example of democracy not working. Uh, I mean, what do you think? What are the long-term ramifications of what we've seen in the last few days for for the wider region? Well, I don't think that uh, events in Egypt uh, will immediately uh, make any influence on others. Uh, You know, every country has its uh, specific features, specific politics and problems, though sometimes they are common, as the so-called Uh, Arab Spring showed us two years ago. Uh, So, uh, probably the position of uh, those who supported uh, the Muslim Brothers, mainly Qatar, or for example uh, Hamas in Gaza, or uh, Syrian uh, version of Muslim Brothers, which uh, is fighting against President Bashar Assad and his regime. 
they may be weakened uh, a little bit. Well, when they lost uh, such uh, 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 a huge partner. Uh, but generally, mm -hmm. as I already told you, uh, from my point of view, in every country they have their own problems, and uh, we shouldn't generalize, uh, uh, judging by. Uh, okay, well, look, um, we'll, we'll back to Cairo with Wael Nawara. Can the opposition put together a coherent vision? that will represent the interests of all Egyptians, all minorities, and uh, includes uh, the Muslim Brotherhood in the body politic? I think that's, uh, that's the biggest challenge right now, is uh, uh, after celebrations and in euphoria in the streets, we have to come back to the, to the reality. The reality is uh, Egypt's uh, economy is, is suffering, and we need to very quickly uh, recover. However, the markets this morning reacted uh, with absolute joy. Uh, they had to stop the uh, Egyptian stock market in the morning because of uh, rises above the limits. And I think uh, there's uh, usually uh, a lot of confidence uh, in, uh, in any situation which is, uh, in a way, sanctioned by the army. Uh, I, I'm not sure about the future of the Muslim Brothers in Egyptian politics. I think it's uh, mm. the next generation of the Muslim Brothers will have to decide that. Can they evolve? and get out uh, from being a totalitarian organization which has militias, uh, political parties, businesses, syndicates, mosques, and so on. Uh, I don't think that would be acceptable. I think uh, they would have to totally separate if they decide uh, to have a political party. It would have to be totally separate uh, and having decisions from inside and not coming from some supreme guide uh, or some uh, uh, bureau who is, which is a, of a secret organization which is not uh, uh, under public uh, scrutiny. I think uh, democracy and secret organizations are not exactly uh, compatible. I hope that Islamists, not necessarily the Muslim Brothers, maybe will be seeing new shapes and forms. Uh, my colleagues from Russia, he was talking about, for example, uh, Abu Fatouh, who um, managed to get uh, 17%. Uh, I would say that half of that only come from Islamists, for example. Also, a known party, uh, which uh, we thought before would be ultra conservative, uh, uh, which is a Salafi, but we saw uh, a lot of maturity in the North Party uh, in the last few months, and, and especially yesterday, I think the uh, North Party was part of uh, the committee which uh, uh, sat down to uh, draft uh, the future map. So I am hopeful that um, the future will be... Uh, Okay. Uh, conclusive and uh, that all parties would participate. Certainly a lot to, to look uh, look forward to and, and watch over the next few months and years. That's Wael Nawara, co-founder of the opposition Aldo Stor party, on the line there from Cairo. Uh, and in Moscow, Vladimir Belyakov, senior researcher at the Institute of Oriental Studies at the Russian Academy of Sciences here in the studio. I was joined by Dina Wahba, who is an Egyptian activist who's just come back from Cairo, and Mustafa Ragab, director of the London-based cultural centre Egyptian House. Now, one of the main backers of the Muslim Brotherhood was Qatar and the new emir, Tamim bin Hamad al Thani, says he will continue to follow the path set by his father who abdicated the throne last week. Does this mean Qatar will continue to be the key power broker in the region? I'll be hosting a discussion on that. That's after a short news update. Stay tuned.